Do you want to know how to measure plastic pollution as one step to identify ways on how to reduce this pollution? This video presents a tool, the Waste Flow Diagram WFD, that helps you do exactly that. The video will guide you through all steps of conducting a WFD plastic leakage analysis. Hi, my name is Chris Zurberg. I work for the Swiss Federal Institute of Aquatic Science and Technology, EABAG. I was part of the team that developed the WFD tool. That is what this video is all about. With me are Maya Zatar and Dorian Tozi Robinson. Hi, I am a consultant with WasteAware. I am an experienced WFD user and also a trainer on how to use the WFD tool. Hi, my name is Dorian. I also work at EABAG with Chris and I am part of the team that has developed these training materials on how to use the Waste Flow Diagram tool. So, let's first start with some context and basic facts about plastic, plastic waste and pollution by plastic waste. Over 300 million tons of plastic are produced every year, half of which is for single-use items such as shopping bags, cups and straws. That's nearly equivalent to the weight of the entire human population every year. From this amount, only 9% is recycled and another 12% is burned or incinerated. The vast majority, 79%, is accumulating in landfills or ends up on land or in water as litter. At some point, much of it ends up in the oceans, the final sink. It is estimated that about 12 million tons of plastic enter into the ocean every year. And most of this pollution, more than 80% is from land-based activities and the remaining 20% from marine sources. There is no accountability for plastic pollution as local evidence is lacking. Although high-income countries generate more plastic waste per person, Scientists estimate that most of the plastic that ends up in the ocean comes from rivers in low to middle income countries. This is because these countries tend to have more mismanaged plastic waste, whereas high income countries have much more effective waste management. This makes the improvement of waste management systems in low to middle income countries critical to reducing plastic pollution and avoid situations as shown in this picture. Now, let's have a look into how to quantify the amount of plastics that ends up into the environment. Several tools exist to help assess the plastic pollution situation. The different tools and approaches for the assessment can be distinguished based on several factors. The objective, the geographical resolution, material and temporal resolution, the data source for leakage, and the level of resources required to do the assessment. Some selected tools are shown here. We won't get into the details of these tools in this video, besides the WFD tool. If you are interested, press the pause button now and note the link or specific name of the tool to search for more information online. Let's look more into detail about what the WFD is and what the motivation is to use the Waste Flow Diagram Assessment Tool. The Waste Flow Diagram is a tool developed to rapidly assess where the plastic pollution is coming from. It focuses on the Municipal Solid Waste Management System as a main source of pollution. Given that urban settlements produce large amounts of waste and low to middle income countries often show a high degree of mismanaged waste, it puts special focus on these contexts. Although it is simplified as much as possible, the WFD relies on data. By requiring data on the municipal solid waste management system, it creates awareness on the need for better overall waste management data. It provides support on how to collect such data through clear guidelines and connects to other methodologies of data collection such as the SDG indicators 11.6.1, which assesses the amount of waste collected and managed safely. By conducting a WFD assessment, the city obtains a baseline situation. This can be used to benchmark and compare with other cities. By repeating the WFD assessment after a certain period, 
One can also monitor and measure how improvements in the solid waste management, infrastructure and services have reduced plastic pollution in the city. Finally, it is with this baseline and the generated evidence through data that decision makers can set priorities and take informed decisions towards improving their waste management system. Let's now see a bit more in detail how the tool works. And for this, I will pass over the word to Maya. The WFD estimates plastic leakage from the solid waste management stages from the source of the pollution. It accounts for uncollected waste, which is all the waste generated where there is no service or where service is deficient. And it accounts for the leakage from the four main stages of the solid waste management system. The waste leaked from the collection system, both from the formal and the informal sector. The waste leaked from the sorting of recyclables and again from both the formal and informal sector. The waste leaked when transported to final disposal or processing facility and the waste leaked from the disposal site. All the plastics escaping from each stage is the considered unmanaged and for this tool, this is the source of the plastics that are leaking into the environment. Let's now see the core functions of the WFD. The WFD answers the following questions. How much pollution comes from where? This is assessed by measuring and estimating the amount of plastic waste that is leaked into the environment from the different stages of the solid waste management system. Where does how much pollution go? Once the plastic waste is leaked into the environment, the question is, where does it go? Here, the WFD helps estimate how much of the plastic waste leaked goes into water, into drains, stays on land or is burnt. The WFD assessment tool also has the functionality to estimate how these leakages would change with improvements in the solid waste management system or with changing condition, for example, the changing population or changing waste generation or composition. We call this the scenario development function of the WFD tool. Now we know a bit more about the WFD. But how should you prepare to do a waste flow diagram assessment? Let's dive into that. Let's have a look at what is required for the fieldwork activities to apply the waste flow diagram. Your WFD fieldwork assessment will entail about five core activities. The first activity is the preparation. To make sure your time on the field is efficient, you need to plan in advance your logistics and the WFD activities such as stakeholder meetings, site visits and coordination with local partners. The second activity is the interviews. Many stakeholders will be relevant for you to meet during your assessment. They will provide you with data for the WFD Excel sheet, but also give you an overview of the municipal solid waste management operations. This will help you perform your observations and analysis of the system and ensure you account for all the relevant aspects in your assessment. The third activity is the site visits. You will mainly visit recovery and disposal facilities managed by both formal and informal services and any relevant main actor active in other stages of the municipal solid waste management system. The fourth activity is the observations. You will observe each stage of the municipal solid waste management system in order to assess the main leakage influencers and investigate where the plastic leakage ends up in the environment. Is the fate of plastics water, land, burnt or in drains? Be patient. We will look in a few moments in more details what we mean by leakage influencers and fates. Lastly, the fifth activity is the data recording. You must take notes of everything you do and see. This will help you at the end of your assessment to create a storyline for the WFD and have a comprehensive understanding of the current municipal solid waste situation. So to get prepared, you need to have a plan. But how much preparation time would this require and what exactly should you do? Let's see. Preparation might take about one to two months. The better prepared you are, the more efficient and successful your mission will be. To prepare your fieldwork mission, you should make sure to set the geographical boundaries of your study, 
You should coordinate with your local partners to prepare data collection and prepare for the site visits. Investigate and study the already existing studies and data to understand the gaps and plan to fill them during your field visit. Have a list of the relevant facilities, both for disposal and recovery. Know which of the main stakeholders of the municipal solid waste management system. Make a daily plan. Consider the need for translation or interpretation and start contacting the key stakeholders and plan for the meetings. Let's look at some details of these key preparatory tasks. The definition of the system boundaries is the first important step in preparing your assessment. For the WFD, the system is usually set at the municipal or city level, in an area not too large and not too narrow, to capture the variations of the solid waste management and limit the potential of interventions. Looking at these two examples here, you can see that the boundaries might not always be obvious to set, but your local partners will usually help you in defining it. Your next step is engaging with local actors to make sure you collect high quality data. It is important you define a weekly schedule with them for your field mission. Here is an example of a weekly schedule. It includes meetings with key stakeholders, visits to disposal and recovery facilities, observations of the municipal solid waste management system, and generally of the survey area. Many stakeholders will be able to provide you with the data you need. The municipal employees are usually able to give you an overview of the municipal solid waste management system in the city and may know it in more or less details. They are the key stakeholders to interview for data point one, two, and three. Informal service and recovery chain stakeholders should be able to provide you with data points four, five, six, and seven. It is usually harder to plan in advance to meet informal apex traders and end of chains recyclers. If your local contacts do not know them, you can ask informal waste pickers where they sell their collected recyclables. Although collection operators may not give you specific data for the information you need, they are good stakeholders to ask about the current challenges and operations. They will be able to give you an overview of the municipal solid waste management system from the operator's point of view. At the disposal site, you would need to discuss with the site manager about data points 8, 9 and 10, which could already be available. We will look into all this data in more details in just a bit. Let's now summarize the fieldwork activities and timeline. The length of your fieldwork may vary. If you are assessing a small village with a limited number of facilities to visit and not many operators, your field mission can be as short or as two or three days. If, on the other hand, you are assessing a large city or capital with many recovery and disposal facilities and with a large panel of operators, your assessment can take significantly longer. As an estimation, you can consider about seven full days of work. During your field work, you should finalize the daily plan with the local team, visit the municipality, visit the recovery and disposal facilities and interview the managers, meet and observe the informal service chain, take pictures of all your observation for your further analysis and reporting, track your visits and observations with an app and geotag them. Now that we understand how to prepare and how much time it would require to implement the WFD, let's go back to the data that is needed for the assessment. Dorian will guide you through this. To quantify the plastic leakage with the waste flow diagram, you will require some data. Prior to your field survey, you should gather information from existing sources to understand the local context. You should make sure about the reliability of the data and make sure it is as up-to-date as possible. The information you need includes the population, the per capita generation of waste and its characterization, the amount of municipal solid waste recovered, the amount of disposed waste and its characterization, and the amount of recyclables extracted from disposal sites. 
During your assessment for the waste flow diagram, you should fill the gaps if this data is not available. Specific data for waste flow diagram is also required and you would be responsible for primary collection of those. These data are the split between formal and informal sector for recovery of waste, how much rejects are there at the sorting facilities, and how much waste is collected by the informal service chain when this is relevant. If you have local contacts that will guide you during the field assessment, it is useful to ask them in advance for any resources they have. If they have access to municipal employees that work in the environment or solid waste management department, you may ask them to liaise with them directly. This will also be an occasion for the local contacts to let the department know that there will be a waste flow diagram assessment going on and that you will most likely carry out interviews with them and with other relevant stakeholders. To summarize, you will need baseline solid waste management data, usually obtained from existing studies or from the application of the WasteWise Cities tool or WACT, data that is specific to the waste flow diagram that will be gathered during the field assessment. So, what do you need once you have all of these data? Now, let's dive into the waste flow diagram Excel tool and see where and how you can report this information. You can download this Excel tool for free from the internet. We have now opened the waste flow diagram Excel tool. You can see that there are several spreadsheets on the bottom. We will now directly go to the one where you will enter baseline data as well as the results from your observations. This one is called baseline data entry. This spreadsheet is structured through five main parts shown in orange color here. In the first one, you can enter the waste generation information in the green cells. Do not forget to inform about the sources of the data and its level of reliability. You can do this here. The first information that you can add in here is the population, the generation per capita, and the waste characterization. In the second part, you can enter the information about the waste treatment or recovery, as well as the information of the disposed waste. The units here are tons per day for each of the waste categories. That's it. This is the first step of using the Excel tool. Now let's go back to the principles of the waste flow diagram and let's look more into what leakage factors and fates are, as we had mentioned earlier. Let's have a look into the waste flows in the solid waste management system through this example. First, there is the generation of waste, which can be collected or not. The uncollected waste is categorized here as unmanaged waste. Waste that is collected can enter the recovery pathway and end up being recycled or recovered. Regarding plastics specifically, one part of this waste might leak into the environment during the process and become unmanaged waste. Another part of the collected waste is transported and brought to the disposal site. During transportation, some plastics might leak into the environment. At the collection point, there is also risks of plastics leaking into the environment. Finally, the disposal site is the last stage of the system where plastics can leak into the environment. Each of the leakage flows from the solid waste management system ends up in the category as unmanaged waste. The waste flow diagram then assesses the fate of the unmanaged waste. The fate can be drains, such as seasonal riverbeds, drains at sidewalks or built-in canals. Water bodies, such as rivers, seas, canals, lakes or lagoons. Land, such as dump sites or simply trapped in the dense vegetation. Burnt, when plastic is burnt as disposal method. Note that the plastics reaching the drains are considered to enter water bodies if they are not collected at some point. To summarize, the waste flow diagram estimates the total plastic leakage by assessing first the amounts leaked at each stage of the solid waste management service chain, 
Then the fates of the leaks are defined, such as burnt, to land, to water, and to drains. Both the leakages and the fates are based on observational assessment. So, let's now dive into detail on how the plastic leakages are quantified. The assessment is done at all the solid waste management stages. At collection, at sorting, at transportation, and at disposal. Each stage is associated with several leakage influencers that are the key indicators used by the waste flow diagram. All the leakage influencers are listed in the manual and the Excel tool of the waste flow diagram. So, what is a leakage influencer? Let's look into the example for the transportation stage. Here, there are three leakage influencers that may cause plastic to leak during the transportation stage of the solid waste management service chain. Load versus capacity that assesses how overloaded the transportation vehicles are. Containment of waste, if it's loaded as bulks or in bags, as less plastic leakage is expected when the waste stays in closed bags. Coverage of trucks, as fully closed trucks are less likely to leak plastic waste. Your role as waste flow diagram surveyors is to observe the leakage influencers at each stage of the solid waste management system to grasp an overview of the situation in the city. For each leakage influencer, you will evaluate the leakage potential as being very high, high, medium, low, very low, or none in some cases. One challenge is to obtain representative observations of the coverage area. To have a representative sampling, you need to do observations of both degraded and clean areas. Make sure that your observations are randomized. This would prevent overestimating leakage values. In this example, we can see a collection route in Beirut. Coastal and inland routes were explored, small and main streets as well. You would then have a representative view of the situation. As the waste flow diagram is an observation-based tool, the expert applying the waste flow diagram has a big responsibility in sampling and interpreting these observations. In order to be fully transparent, the whole process should be properly documented and justified. You should do that in the waste flow diagram report in order for any reader to be able to go through your process and understand how decisions of attribution of leakage factors to the leakage influencers were made. When observing the solid waste management system, make sure to document your observations by taking pictures. You can even geotag your pictures to present the results to clients and to show specifically on a map where the pictures were taken. Now, as promised, we are going to see together how we can rate each of the leakage influencers. Let's go back to our example for the transportation of waste and more specifically, consider the leakage influencer coverage of trucks. These pictures represent the situation of most of the trucks that you saw collecting waste in the city. The waste flow diagram tool provides you with a table with multiple descriptions of the possible situation. Your role is to select the most appropriate leakage potential. The corresponding leakage factor is the value used to calculate the contribution from this leakage influencer to the total plastic leakage from the solid waste management system. If you are interested into the details, you can read the user manual, which gives you the detailed calculation information. But where can you find these tables and how to use the leakage potentials that you decide to attribute to these leakage influencers and the others? Let's dive back into the waste flow diagram Excel tool once more. We are now back in the same data sheet as before for the baseline data entry. Remember that the first and the second part are for the solid waste management data inputs. Part three is about the level of control of the facilities. This is an optional step that is part of the WACT methodology. We will skip it here. We go to the fourth part, where you can assess the plastic leakages potential for each leakage influencer. 
to access the description tables of the leakage influencer to help you choose the corresponding leakage factor, you can directly click on the name of the leakage influencer. Let's do it for the vehicle cover as an example. You find here the decision tree that the tool uses for the calculation of the leakage percentage from transportation. To select the most appropriate leakage potential, read the descriptions from bottom to top and decide which is the most representative of the study area. Let's say that in our example, most of the collection vehicles in the city are uncovered vehicles. You then decide that the leakage potential is very high. You can go back to the data input sheet by clicking on the link to go back. You then select very high from the drop down menu of this leakage influencer. And there you go. You filled the waste flow diagram Excel information for this leakage influencer. You have to repeat the operation for all the influencers and you're ready to move forward to the next steps. Remember that there might be much differences across a city, so make sure to average your observations and select the leakage potentials that represents best the situation overall. Let's have a look at this example for the city in the Philippines. In this example, you can read the leakage potentials attributed to each of the leakage factors and for each solid waste management stage. That's all there is to know about leakage influencers. We now move on to the next step, which will help you understand where leaked plastics end up in the environment. We just saw how to assess the plastic leakage factors. The next step is to assess the fate of these plastics. Remember that there are four fates possible for the plastics. Trapped on land, into water bodies, into drains, and burned. Let's go back to our waste flow diagram Excel tool and see where to find information and how to assess and input the values to compute fates of plastics. We are again in the baseline data entry spreadsheet. The last part is relevant for the assessment of fates. Remember, we only assess the fate of unmanaged plastics. Very similar to what we did for the leakage influencers, you can click on the corresponding link and access the table that will help you to do the assessment. Let's look into the fate of plastic waste leaked during collection and transportation, and specifically the level of plastic going to water systems. From the description table, you can select the fate potential that is most representative of the study area. For this example, you decide that the fate potential is low. You can then select the potential from the drop-down menu. There you go. You now know how to assess the fate and enter the corresponding fate potentials into the waste flow diagram Excel tool. With this, we have completed the waste flow diagram observations and assessment. Let's now wrap up the steps of the assessment with Maya. We have now completed our WFD assessment. Let's summarize the steps we followed. Based on municipal solid waste management data, the WFD computes the amount of municipal solid waste generated for each stream, together with the collection coverage and therefore the amount of uncollected waste. The observational assessment of the leakage influencers at each stage of the municipal solid waste management system lets the WFD compute the amount of leaked and thus unmanaged plastic waste. The observational assessment of the four fate types allows to quantify the amount of plastic waste ending up in each fate, burned on land, in water and in drains. Well, we have gone through the first functions of the WFD and we will still have to show you the results of the assessment. But just before that, let's make a small detour into the last function of the WFD. In addition to computing baseline results, the WFD is capable of running scenarios with two objectives. Firstly, to gain approximate insights into how proposed interventions may impact the solid waste management system and plastic pollution. For example, the user could simulate how increasing the collection coverage would impact the amounts of plastic leaking into waterways. 
Secondly, to upscale the WFD to capture plastic leakages at a larger level. Let's have a look at this scenario feature directly in the WFD Excel tool. We now click on the Scenario Data Entry Spreadsheet. In this column, you can see the baseline data, which corresponds to the same information that you entered in the Baseline Data Entry Spreadsheet. In these columns, you have three possible scenarios that you can construct and in which you could change one or several values corresponding to the improvements that you want to model. It is up to you to decide the situation you would like to model. Let's take an example. Here, the changes compared to the baseline are highlighted in red. Scenario 1 shows the same results as the baseline when optimizing waste collection with no additional investments. In Scenario 2, new containers and a new waste truck were purchased. This leads to an increase in the collection coverage by 10% to 95% and a reduction in the percentage of metals generated collected by the informal value chain. In Scenario 3, the implementation of a sorting facility for 20% of paper and 20% of plastics generated, in addition to the investment in Scenario 2, leads to 20% more plastics and paper being diverted from landfill and sorted for recovery. This table shows the quantities of plastic waste involved at each stage of the municipal soil waste management system. You can pause the video here to look at the impact of the interventions. From these results, the interventions tested through Scenario 3 would therefore have the best impact out of the three scenarios, with an increased collection coverage, increased recovery rate, decreased plastic waste quantities ending up in a disposal site, and increased quantities of plastic waste managed in controlled facilities. The result of the baseline scenario can also be visualized with a Sankey diagram. Here, we will look at the example of Mombasa in Kenya. We can see the flows of plastics for each stage of the municipal solid waste management system. On the right, we can see the fates of the leaked plastics. In this case, 21% of the total plastic waste generated ends up into the water bodies. This represents more than 4,500 tons per year, or 3.8 kilograms per person per year in this example. You can see that most of the unmanaged waste comes actually from the uncollected waste and there are small contributions from leakages from the municipal solid waste management stages. Such a visual representation leads to quickly interpreting these results. A significant reduction in plastic leakage can be achieved by increasing the collection service coverage to decrease the amount of uncollected waste. The disposal, collection or transport stages produce some leakages, which are minimal compared to the amount of uncollected waste. You can use these results to analyze priorities for interventions and target the components that influence most the leakages of plastics. Let's have a look at this other example. We can see here that uncollected waste is, again, the greatest contributor to unmanaged plastic waste. The leakages from the disposal site and the rejects from the formal sorting also contribute significantly to the total plastic leakage. Therefore, a key intervention here would be to expand the collection services and improve the conditions of the disposal site and of the rejects from the sorting facilities. The leakages to the water system in this example are of 1,185 tons per year, which is equivalent to more than 7 kilograms per person. Through these examples, you had a quick overview of the results and the analysis that can be done based on them. The uncollected waste is in many cases a critical factor of plastic leaking into the environment and particularly into water. Let's look at another way of showing the results. For this example of a municipality in Albania, we decided to show the percentages of mismanaged plastics for each of the stages of the municipal solid waste management system. Here, 59% of the total unmanaged plastics are not collected. 34% is leaking from the collection system, less than 1% leaks from transportation, and less than 1% from disposal sites. 
54% of this plastic then ends up on land and 45% in water systems. Nothing, pretty much nothing, is burnt and very little remains in drains. In this case, 3.1 kg per person is leaked every year into the environment, from which 1.4 kg ultimately ends up in water systems. We now have a look at the result summary spreadsheet. Here, you will find two tables. The first one gives you the result for waste management system and for the plastics. It shows the values of the main flows of solid waste throughout the solid waste management system. The second table gives details about where the unmanaged plastics are leaking from, as well as the fate of the unmanaged plastics. Let's now open the flow diagram spreadsheet. Here, you can select the scenario that you want to show, as well as the material stream you want to visualize. Let's look at the baseline situation for plastics. You can then see the corresponding waste flow diagram that represents the values that we previously saw in the tables. Right underneath, you will find the instructions to create the Sankey diagram, which is done on an external tool online. You can work with the WFD Excel tool only for the whole assessment. Nonetheless, we recommend that you would also use the online portal of the WFD, which is another option to enter your assessment data and present the results. Let's have a look at this portal and the functionalities that it provides. If you want to access all the functionalities of the portal, you first have to register. Without this step, you would only be allowed to use part of the functionalities as a visitor. Once you are registered, you can log in onto the portal and access the portal's functionalities. Here, we are already logged in. Let's explore the portal's menu. First, the world map. Here, you can access the results of all the public studies. You can always decide whether a study that you enter into the portal would be public or not. Let's click on one of these case studies. You can see the same tables that you saw in the WFD Excel tool, the unmanaged plastics and the waste management results summary. In the portal, the Senki diagram is automatically generated once you have completed your assessment. You would just need to adjust it to your needs, but it's quite easy to do so. A waste flow diagram is also automatically generated. You can use it for the report and for your results presentation. Let's go back to the menu and select Browse Data. Here you can compare results from the case studies. You have several options to play with this function and what you would like to see. We invite you to have a look and play with it yourself. Then we have the resources. Here you will find all the additional and up-to-date resources that accompany the WFD tool. You will find templates to prepare your report or present your results as well as other relevant resources. In here, you will also find an Excel file that will allow you to directly import your WFD Excel tool, completed assessment into the portal. We invite you to use this functionality to access the benefits of the online portal. Finally, we enter the user dashboard. Here, you will find all your studies and can create new ones. To create a new study, you have two options. You can either import your WFD Excel file, as just mentioned, or you can directly enter your data into the portal by following the steps under Create a new study. The portal will guide you through the steps to follow and provide you with all the necessary information, such as the decision tables for leakage influencers or fates. This is it for the portal. Please visit it and play around to get more familiar with the functionalities. So, that was it. We have reached the end of this short introduction to the waste flow diagram. We have shown you an overview of the functionalities of the WFD tool and how to use the WFD Excel tool as well as the online portal. Now, it is your turn to dive into the available materials and to start applying the waste flow diagram. 
Here are the links to the supporting materials. Pause the video to note the links. As more people use the WFD tool and collect more data on soil waste management systems, the better we can drive informed decisions and reduce plastic pollution. Thanks for watching. Bye.